the August the 27th, 2012, regular meeting of the Frankfurt Board of Commissions to order. I'd like for each of us to please stand for the invocation by the Reverend Herschel York, Berkman and Baptist Church, and then remain standing for a pledge of allegiance to our flag. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to live in a land of freedom, and we appreciate all these who serve in order to bless the citizens of this city. We pray that you'll give them wisdom, grant them grace, patience, understanding, and I pray that uh, as they conduct the business of the city, that uh, they will do so in a way that uh, honors the eternal principles of, that you have revealed in your character and in your word. We pray this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated. Thank you, Reverend York. Uh, Reverend York, we thank you for being with us this evening. Thank you very much. Would the uh, clerk please call the roll? Mr. Wilder? Here. Mr. Hedden? Here. Mr. Turner? Here. Mr. May? Here. May Graham? Here. We're all present counting for it. Appreciate each of you for being with us there uh, this, on this meeting of our city commission. Uh, the, uh, like the first thing we have is for a minutes. You have a copy of the July 16th, 2012 special meeting, July 23rd, 2012 regular meeting, July 27th, 2012 special meeting, and August the 13th, 2012 work session. Do I have a motion pertaining to approval of the minutes? May I move that the uh, reading be dispensed with the meetings be, the minutes be approved? Okay, by Commissioner May. Is a second? I'll Commissioner second. Pitton. Any questions in the comments? Please call the roll. Commissioner Wilder? Yes. Commissioner Hayden? Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes. Commissioner May? Yes. May Brand? Yes, so the minutes are approved. Next item on the agenda are ceremonial items. I will now recognize our city manager, Mr. McGowan. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. We're honored tonight to have uh, with us some special guests and uh, we would like them to uh, come forward and mayor if you could go down to they're going to make a presentation uh, we're honored to have with us uh, senator julian carroll representative carl rollins and state representative Derek Green. so thank you all very much for being with us and i'd like our public works uh, director also to come up because this will uh, be something that he'll be very happy to receive in his department very happy, yeah. very happy. Half of all of us from the General Assembly who represent the people of Franklin and Franklin County, we'd like to present this check for $100,000 for a traffic study that the city, the mayor, uh, helped to initiate in terms of asking us to try to, to seek some funding uh, for this traffic study. And downtown Franklin, I believe, we also must recognize them as well. Uh, but this is something that we're trying to make sure that the traffic flow here in this county pertaining to state government. Uh, to study that, to see what we can do to improve the traffic flow here in downtown Franklin. And upon behalf of Senator Carroll, Representative Rollins, and myself, Mayor, we'd like to present you with this check for the traffic study for Franklin and Franklin County. Thank you. discussion just since I've been here as mayor and uh, so we appreciate your efforts we appreciate how well that you work with the city I know we work the county the same way but you each of you have been very responsive to, to our needs we certainly are appreciative of this thank you thank you, thank you very much um, and if we could really I know tonight Fred this is your last night and Fred we've been working all three of us have worked with you and we want to say to the, the people of Frankfurt, he's been an outstanding public servant, servant since he's been across the river and since he's been over here on this side of the river. 
and we thank you and we salute you for your service to the people of Franklin and Franklin County. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a comment real quick before our gentleman. I just want to make a comment and thank our uh, three representatives in the legislature, uh, Senator Carroll, uh, Representative Rollins, and uh, Representative Graham for coming down to bring this check. Uh, this is a culmination of a lot of hard work uh, uh, from people throughout this community, downtown Frankfurt, uh, the Downtown Property Owners Association, and I know that this has been a major priority of this commission. So we thank you so much for all the hard work that you do for this city and all the uh, cooperation that you provide us, uh, and we couldn't have three better members in the, uh, in the Senate and the House. So thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next, if we could have uh, Chief Possage come forward, please. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Goins. We have uh, one retirement from the fire department that we'd like to recognize tonight, and that's Jeffrey Anglin, if you would come on up. Firefighter paramedic, Jeffrey Anglin. Unfortunately for us, Jeff is reaching his 20-year mark and has chosen to go on to bigger and better things. Uh, turn around here so I can get a picture. And uh, he's got, I think, two more shifts left. Uh, so we're recognizing him tonight upon his 20-year retirement. Jeff is, uh, he served as a preceptor for many of our paramedics, our, our newly, newly uh, licensed and student paramedics over the years. So he's responsible for many of them being as good as they are. Uh, he's uh, also, he was our, one of our EMS shift supervisors for a number of years when we had that position. So he, he's done a lot for him and, and we owe him a big uh, round of applause for his, his work. The plaque reads, Jeffrey L. Anglin, in appreciation for your dedication to the citizens of Frankfort and Franklin County in your 20 years of service to Frankfort Fire and Emergency Medical Services, August 17th, 1992, August 31st, 2012. And before you sit down, I have one other thing for you, and the mayor is going to have something for you. Um, also, uh, I want to recognize Jeff in that he's one of those those people. Uh, any organization always has a, a certain people that are always reliable, dependable, and he's been one of those people. Um, he has probably treated patients with just about every uh, type of imaginable injury or illness over his 20 years that you can imagine. So um, uh, he's just been, he's been very valuable to our service. So I have a commendation for Firefighter Jeffrey L. Anglin. Firefighter Paramedic Jeffrey L. Anglin has unselfishly served the residents and visitors of Frankfort and Franklin County for 20 years. He has consistently provided emergency medical care at a level of excellence while demonstrating compassion and professionalism. Jeff has demonstrated commitment and loyalty to Frankfurt Fire and EMS and for, has performed his duties in an exceptional manner. Therefore, Jeffrey L. Anglin is hereby recognized with appreciation and presented with the Chief's Commendation Medal on this day of August 27th. Okay, and Jeff, uh, from the city of Frankfurt, we have a certificate of appreciation to you for your 20 years of outstanding service and all the good things that the chief's already said about you. <laughs> I cannot add to that, but other than to say, well, thank you for your love for our city and your service and service <coughs> well. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let me get a picture here. Thank you so much. Any commissioners want to 
And if you call me, feel free to jump right in. <laughs> Have fun on your retirement. Enjoy your last two shifts. Uh -huh. Thank you for your yeah. service. Best wishes, Jeff. <laughs> and uh, we have another <laughs> retirement. As has already been said, uh, this will be my last uh, meeting tonight, and uh, I will be retiring. So uh, I've, I've really enjoyed uh, working for the citizens of Frankfurt, and I thank the uh, city commission for allowing me this privilege to serve as city manager of my hometown. It's a kind of unique thing. Thank you. Okay, now we have a, a little certificate for, please stand up here, Frederick. Oh. This is Frederick, <laughs> Frederick Hampton Goins. I've known him since he was a baby. <laughs> a great guy, that comes from good stock. And he certainly has demonstrated that this last 20 months here with the city. This is Fred's third retirement. He retired from the health department after how many years? 23. 23. Then he went over to, over to the county fiscal court, deputy county judge. How many years, Fred? Eight. Eight, okay. And now he's finishing up with the city government with 20 months. You can see that uh, you learned much more with us in a much shorter period of time. Yeah. And I, I used to be, <laughs> uh, when I first started, I used to be six foot two. So <laughs> it's really worn me down. But Fred, thank you so much on behalf of the oh, commission. You. You've really been an outstanding uh, city manager for us. And I've said to many people that your demeanor and the way you deal with the public is really enhanced, I think, the image of our city. I'm so grateful that you had a chance to work with you in this role. Thank you, Andy. Commissioner, you want to say anything? Feel free to do so. Okay. Start down at the end and come over down this way. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I've had the opportunity to see several city managers go through the city over the years. And while serving as city commissioner and serving as mayor, I, I, can, I can honestly say that, that Fred's been the, uh, the best one to work with in terms of understanding what's good for the organization, what's good for the community, because he's had a background in public service beforehand, but also because Fred was uh, raised in Frankfurt, has lived all his life, and he really cared. Uh, it's hard to um, imagine uh, not being able to continue to serve with, with Fred. I was looking forward to seeing Fred around for a few years, but understand um, his decision and supporting but he's been the best to work with um i worked with fred when he was with the health department then in county government and then city government and, and like i said he's not a finer individual to work with and i'm proud to call him a friend and we'll miss him and wish you well in all that you do thank you very much and thank you for your service well fred where to start uh, between me and you uh I've known Fred for a number of years and, and uh, always have been proud to consider him a friend. Uh, get the uh, luxury of being able to work with his daughter every single day uh, and got to know him through that. I, I wanted, I started on this uh, last month and I, I'll, I'll make it quick, number one, because I know you don't want to hear me talk and blabber up here, and plus I've got a cold that I'm trying to overcome, so bear with me please. But um, I want to remind us all of where we were 20 months ago. We had just overcome, and quite frankly, we're in Frankfurt's darkest hour. We had just overcome uh, our first major ethics scandal that left us with a huge void of leadership uh, in the top of city government. And people had lost faith uh, in, in the city of Frankfurt and lost faith in their government. Um, and on top of it, uh, three commissioners who were 30 and under were elected uh, to come and lead this community over the next two years and I, I along with the rest of the commission felt that it was very important that uh, in searching for a new city manager we found someone who had uh, who was well known for their honesty their integrity um, who had roots in this community uh, who would be able to work well with the other governments which is an issue that we had had in the past uh, and, and boy let me tell you Fred Cohen's they broke the mold when they made you uh, if anything that uh, this commission has done that has been an extreme success, it is 
uh, undoubtedly hiring Fred Goins uh, as city manager. He has worked tirelessly to repair uh, the relationship with this community. Uh, he's been a model leader uh, for this organization and it will be a big void uh, to fill his role here. And Fred, it has been an absolute honor to have served with you. And, and I just wish you the best. Uh, and I look forward to continuing our friendship in the many, many years ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Fred, um, as a newly elected official coming in on that first night, um, I can't think of anyone better to learn under is you and, and Mayor Graham who have really helped me so much learning the process and how how city government flows, how it functions. And as a city manager, I, I've worked under several managers myself and I like your style. I like the way you carry yourself. I think the rest of the department heads appreciate you as well. Um, you're going hard shoes to fill, but thank you so much for stepping up to the plate and joining us for these first 20 months. Good luck, and uh, maybe we'll see you on the Frankfurt front page of the State Journal as Frankfurt's new turtle hunter or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> you know, we hired you as an interim, interim city manager, and you never lobbied for the uh, non-interim position. Um, I think we were very lucky to be able to convince you to to uh, to accept the non-interim title. Um, and even though even though we did manage to keep you longer than uh, initially any of us thought we would be able to, uh, we're still sad to see you go. Although um, I think you certainly leave the city in better shape than you found it, and that's really all any of us can hope for. So kudos to you, and you you might be. Other folks have a longer institutional memory than I do. You might be the first city manager to retire from Frankfurt. I wonder. Mm -hmm. So certainly the, the first in anybody's, anybody in here's memory. Uh, so congratulations, man. Thank you. M Mayor, if I can just make one more comment. Sure. I, 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 I think it would be appropriate, and, and I hope the rest of the commission agrees, if we all join and, and, and stand up and applaud uh, the service that uh, Fred Goins has met, done over the last 20 months. Point out also that uh, next next month we break in another local one, the chief, <laughs> real hard to come in and get his feet wet in this role. So we look forward to working with you, chief. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Uh, next on the uh, agenda are for citizens' comments, and uh, this is a time that any citizen can come and address the commission on any topic. We try to adhere to uh, a five-minute time limit, and uh, so if any citizen would like to address the commission, please come forth and do so. State your name, and then make your comment. Any commission, any citizen, okay, come forth. Good evening. Oh, oh, the speaker, yeah. Okay. Last time I came here, I got to sit up front and was much more relaxed. <laughs> but uh, good evening, and uh, I think all of you know me. My name is Brent Swager. I'm the president of Walk Bike Frankfurt. And uh, tonight I come to you with an opportunity. Uh, as you all know, the, uh, there is a, a project, a sewer project, which is going to be taking place. It's actually started construction already. Uh, part of which is going to take place on Louisville Road, specifically Louisville, the hill that uh, starts down, uh, just down the road from here and goes uh, up the hill towards uh, Juniper Hill Park. As part of that project, they're going to, uh, of course, put in some new, the, the sewer work that's needed, but they're also going to have to resurface the road. And when that's done, uh, what we'd like to ask for is, rather than putting it back exactly how it was before, is to come up with a new striping configuration so that you would have, rather than one lane coming down and two lanes coming up, 
have one lane coming down and one lane going up with uh, additional bike lane on each, each side. Currently it's about 36 feet wide. Uh, it can accommodate that width. Uh, really wouldn't hurt the function of the road. Um, and it would not be an extra cost to the sewer department to make that change. <coughs> to make this happen, it would require an approval from the transportation cabinet. Uh, so uh, basically a request would be, have to be made by the city um, and an approval it would have to be reviewed and then approved um, by the state. So tonight I'd like to ask the uh, commission to, for, the, for your support uh, to make that change and with that support uh, to have the city draft a letter um, to, to the state for that change. The reason for this is, is that we've started, we have our master plan that was developed in 2007 to provide walking and biking connections um, all around our city. We have a good start where we put in some bike lanes on 2nd Street. Uh, what we want to do is continue that process and working our way up the hill um, and, and continuing west on 60. You know, and all of this would be for tying in you know, and having a full network uh, at some point in the future. So this is just an opportunity where uh, we can do it. We can do it quickly and for free, uh, basically, uh, by piggybacking on the sewer project. And uh, throw it out there for any questions or comments. Your request is that, we, that the commission agree to submit a letter, you say, to Correct. the transportation cabinet mm -hmm. uh, regarding the feasibility of this? Well, the, the, uh, that you would support this change and that you'd like for them uh, yes, I know. It, yes, you want to, That's what you ask the commission to do. Yes. Okay. Uh, commissioner, do you all have any comments to make on this? Commissioner Glauber. I guess I'll just say that I would. I would be happy to support this. Uh, we've seen over the last uh, couple of years a number of uh, bicycle and pedestrian accidents around town. I think clearly making uh, alternative accommodations. Uh, and making safer accommodations for cyclists and pedestrians at this point is really a public safety issue. And what you're asking for would also create an additional buffer between the sidewalk going up that hill and the lanes of traffic. Uh, but any effort, any, I think any opportunity we have to incorporate uh, these accommodations into existing traffic flow without disrupting the traffic flow and without costing any money, I mean, I, personally, I, I think that seems like a no-brainer. And I realize it's, it's obviously the state's decision, just as it was on 2nd Street. But uh, I think it, I think this would be a good request for us to make. And and frankly, also it, I think it goes even beyond public safety because when you get uh, these alternative accommodations in place, and, well, people use them and it enhances I think just the livability and quality of life mm -hmm. in the community across the board. Okay, I'd like to uh, as city manager now in regard to this to this request. Is there any kind of uh, uh, comments that we should have, maybe from the chief or well, public works? Uh, or? The, of course, this is a, a new request that I don't think has been discussed uh, with staff, but would there be any uh, comments, uh, preliminary, discussing it right now. preliminary, <laughs> preliminary uh, comments that uh, that, and any, that any department head would like to make? Was this affect your uh, department or? I'm seeing the uh, sewer department saying no, it would not affect their project. And I'm seeing uh, Chief City Manager Mark Wilhoit coming forward. Chief Manager. <laughs> Well, you promised you weren't going to throw me in the deep end. <laughs> Splash. <laughs> exactly. Well, as a person who travels Louisville Hill daily, uh, of course, I see the people riding bikes down the hill, and they can, pretty close with traffic, going up the hill, that, that's, you're going to have to be a good biker, but uh, I, I would suspect that uh, uh, we could either, we could do this a couple of different ways. We could take to, uh, uh, Forward to the traffic committee, which now consists of uh, uh, me and Mr. Hackbart, <laughs> but I'll, I'll get a representative from the police department. 
but uh, we, we could do it that way. You could have a, a sense of the commission, you know, whether you support such a thing or not. And then uh, as far as what we have to do with the Department of Transportation, I'm, I'm sure it's uh, very similar to what we did for Second Street. And the same, hopefully the same people are there that uh, we would contact. So, and, uh, um, how long of a period of time do you, know, you think it would take for we get some kind of a feedback? Well, we could, we could get started on it this week. Mm -hmm. I start the job tomorrow, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. and so we, I think that sounds reasonable. Uh, I think that sounds reasonable. Yeah. Okay, you got okay, it with the okay, traffic committee. We, we, right, we, could, we, could get something, we can get something back to, um, back to you at least, uh, give, give you some preliminary indications yeah. for it. For a work session next month. That, that would be fine. Would that sound all right to you guys? That yes. sounds great. Thank yeah. you. I think that would probably fit in with Mr. Scalf's uh, time frame. Time instruction. Okay. You're not going to get this done in the next couple of weeks, are you? <clears throat> Maybe he'll approve under the new city manager. I did it. Good luck. The the only that's that's the only thing I would I would uh, stress is um, we don't know exactly when we're going to start Louisville Hill. Uh, it'll probably be now in about three to four weeks. That project has to be done within ten weeks. So we've got maybe fourteen to sixteen weeks um, before we got to open it back up. That would be my only. So concern. we can get a report in September. Yeah. Okay. So just just as long as we recognize that, because once once we finished our work and repaved, they're going to want to get that open back up as soon as possible. Of course. Okay. Thank you all. Thanks, guys. Thanks. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for taking your time on that and, and considering that. And uh, and uh, just one other thing as far as the time schedule to just re remember is that although it sounds like we do have a lot of time built in here. Um, this will also obviously have to go through the review process at the at the transportation cabinet, which who knows how long that might take. So, okay, thank you. All right, thank, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, any other citizen comment? My name is Lucy Stevens. I live at 200 Thistlewood Avenue across from Juniper Hill Swimming Pool behind Allison's Dry Cleaners. <clears throat> and I'm here to, um, I'm not going to speak to this <clears throat> report necessarily other than the, this is a front and back the way it was Xeroxed. And at the end of the report there's a very small section referencing um, Thistleton Terrace <clears throat> condominiums where I live and I just wanted to say that the building that I am currently living in and have been living in for quite some time is uh, about to collapse that, and that's not an exaggeration um, we have a wall that has crumbled and been that way for well over six months <clears throat> we also have a staircase that is has been for several year, years been been pulling away from uh, from the uh, side that holds it up and it's fallen down. We also have a gutter that has been halfway missing for over a year. The cockroaches uh, have returned in great force and I you know, I'm killing, killing cockroaches left and right all the time. It's a very unsanitary, stre stressful situation. And I wanted to come down and, and speak to that again. I have not spoken to it for quite some time. I want each of you to read this report. Just don't throw it away. You know, I know, you know, I can get long-winded on paper. Uh, and But that's not that bad. It can be read quickly enough. It's readable, I think. 
And uh, I want you to read it. I want you to realize what, <coughs> what's going on about what's in this report. I also want to say that I am an avid supporter of the Frankfurt Transit System here in Frankfurt. I think it's a wonderful system. And I, and I really, really care about it and like it. And I need it and I want it. And I want my ridership to be reinstated immediately. I've been asking about this. I was told there was going to be a, <clears throat> I think the word investigation was used. And I don't see how an investigation could be held without my input. That's fundamental to any investigation. But I have to be very careful what I say because personnel issues cannot be heard publicly. You have to go behind closed doors. So I have to be very careful about that. But I want you to realize how important Frankfurt Transit is to me. It's critically, critically important to me. I have to have it. That's just the bottom line. And I, I deserve the right. It is my civil right to ride Frankfurt Transit. That's the bottom line. I have done absolutely and utterly nothing that would rise to the level to dismiss me permanently from that service. I have to have it. And I want to hear, I want some follow up on it. And I want you to read this report. Every word in here is true. And I want to be consulted. I want to be treated like a human being. Because I am a human being. And I have to have Frankfurt Transit, period, for necessities. And I want you, every one of you here, to understand that. These services that you provide are critical to some people in this community. And they may be very brave, and they may be very proud to be a prideful person and to make their way along, but they need what you all are giving to them. I do. I need it. I have to have it. And I want it back. And I want it back now. Or if I don't get it back, I want to be told specifically why. And this that's going on here in this report, I want it to stop. Period. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Stevens. Uh, you, you have any comments or anything like that? Some of some of this report that uh, was just given goes back uh, all the way back to 2003. But uh, most recently, I did meet with Ms. Stevens yes, uh, you did. about a current issue. And uh, I took uh, notes. pretty detailed notes on that, and I turned those notes over to uh, Public Works with uh, a request for them to look into the situation. Uh, basically, uh, what I found out about the situation was that, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, <coughs> But I, I found out that, uh, and Ms. Stevens said that she had become uh, upset while on the bus, and she wadded up a transfer ticket, or and and threw that to the dashboard of the bus. That's right. And uh, found out from the from the bus driver's account, the bus driver only saw out of her periphery vision. When she threw the paper wide, saw that hand go by, and thought that Mrs. Stevens had uh, attempted to uh, to make contact with the bus driver, uh, and then I turned it over to Public Works. Now, have you all found any, any more about that, or is there anything to report tonight? May I speak to what you just said? I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with it. I want to speak to this. Uh, throwing something at someone. I don't do that. There were four options in that situation. Now this, quite frankly, is somewhat embarrassing. It's somewhat embarrassing to me to have this conversation publicly. So I would prefer, since you're going to honor the Public Works Department and Frankfurt Transit Group uh, personnel issues to be held in private, that I would expect 
the same courtesy for this to be sure. held privately. So I'm asking either. you not to to comment any further about what I did or didn't do. I'm not I'm not undermining you, Mr. Goins, because I appreciate number one, you met with me without an appointment. That that was very kind. The Monday after the incident on Friday, first of all, I don't throw things at anybody. What happened in that instance, and you have an audio visual tape that they're quite proud of having. All you have to do is pop the tape in and see exactly what happened from the beginning of the day to the end of the day. There were four options in that situation. Give her the, the normal procedure is you turn over the transfer slip to the bus driver, which I tried to do. She didn't take it. Now, I don't know how long it took for her not to take it, but it, she'd already, and I won't go on and on and on about it, but I already told you this. I, I already stood out in the rain, knocked on the door to try to get her to let me in. The whole thing is quite lengthy. At any rate, I got weary of trying to get her to take the thing, so I rolled it up into a paper wad and threw it on the dashboard. The other three options were as follows. Throw it at her, which it never... <laughs> Never entered my mind to do that when she set out her peripheral vision. That's as weak as it can be because out of any vision that she would have held, she would have clearly seen I never was even aiming anything at her. I was forever aiming at the dashboard. It wasn't hard to do. I wasn't far from the dashboard. I rolled it up into a paper wad and threw it on the dashboard, which runs the length of the bus, the front of the bus. And I sat down. The other options were throw it at her, which of course it never entered my mind to do, throw it on the floor, which I wouldn't do either because I imagine she has it for record keeping. Third, obstruct the coin receptor with the piece of paper, or four, throw it on the dashboard. <coughs> so I threw it on the dashboard and turned around and sat down in the seat and she <coughs> told me to um, get off the bus. And I told her I couldn't get off the bus because I, I didn't have a way home. Now, I can go on and on and on about what happened. I'm not going to do that. But that's the explanation for what happened. But what's annoying is this: he said, she said, when you have the audio-visual tapes, to... Okay, uh, Ms. Stevens, thank you. And uh, Mr. Goins, you, we have but this is on... I would prefer any more comments about me. Yes, yes, right, right, I understand. Uh, I, I apologize to you. I thought no, you. No, I thought you no, wanted you're, you're to, to discuss it. Uh, can Public Works continue to look into this? Yeah, get get more detail. Okay. 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 I, if I may, Mayor, I would prefer to have a copy of whatever decision or, or reports made from Public Works, if you don't mind. So, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other citizen comment? Okay, if, if not, let's move on to uh, Mr. Moore and the ordinances. Uh, yes, sir. Ordinance 4.1. This is an ordinance amending Chapter 110 of the City of Frankfurt Code of Ordinances, Section 110.04, and Chapter 111 of the City of Frankfurt Code of Ordinances, Section 111.30. Summary. This ordinance amends Section 110.04, Net Business Profits, to increase the amount of the minimum net business profits fee to $60, and amend section 111.30 itinerant businessmen and contractors to provide that they are only required to pay the minimum annual net business profits fee of $60 with no additional license fee due. And this is a second reading. Okay, do you have a motion pertaining to orders 4.1? So moved. Uh, Commissioner Wilder, second. I'll second it. Uh, Commissioner Turner, any discussion? Commissioner Wilder. Um, I guess I'd just like to uh, to say for the, the public's understanding, um, right now uh, we have a, a business <coughs> licensing process that's a little more complicated than this. Uh, a lot of the folks who work in town have to uh, pay a $25 fee at one point during the year and a $35 fee at another point in the year, um, and this will allow uh, this will allow us to charge and collect just a single consolidated fee, um, which not only will allow uh, our collections uh, process to work more efficiently and allow, more efficiently, and allow our finance department to operate more efficiently, uh, but should also um, hopefully simplify uh, the process of doing business in the city for uh, for the folks who come in here. Uh, to work 
so uh, I, I mean anything we can do obviously to make it easier to do business um, even even something this small I think is a, a real benefit thank you mayor you have a comment? Yes. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Wilder. Yes. Commissioner Hedden. Yes. Commissioner Turner. Yes. Commissioner May. Yes. Mayor Graham. Uh, yes, so ordinance 4.1 is approved. Mr. Moore. Number 4.2, by title and ordinance amending chapter 71, section 71.31 of the City of Frankfurt Code of Ordinances. Summary, this ordinance amends section 71.31 to provide that speed limits over city streets shall be 25 miles per hour unless marked otherwise. Okay, do I have a motion pertaining to ordinance 4.2? I'll move for approval, Mayor. Okay, Mr. Turner, do second? Second. Commissioner Wilder, any discussion? Uh, Mr. Hedden. Yes, Mayor. Um, I see that this also says there's no impact on financially, but is there any cost of signage change that we're going to have to face that or is it just a minimal amount? The cost would be additional signs in spots that aren't already posted. Okay. If, if a street is posted uh, 35, some have, I think, as low as 15 in spots. So. Mm -hmm. Um, it just depends on if there's a, a section or a street that hasn't previously been posted <laughs> and they would like to get it posted or if it's posted higher and they wanted it lower. Okay. And then uh, the signs that we take, 35, we could sell to another city if they need or surplus? I don't them. know if the sign shop, they may recycle those. And okay. I don't know how the sign shop does that. We can probably keep in case we need it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Although, and just to be clear, as, as things stand, the sign, the areas that are currently 15 or 45, that's correct. Areas that are currently posted, what, whatever change, is marked is marked. But the, mm -hmm. the just, just the spots in the neighborhoods, uh, and the deeper in the subdivisions that are posted, that's the correct. default is, is 25. Thank you. Okay. Any other, any other comments? Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Call on. Mr. Wilder. Yes. Mr. Hedden. Yes. Mr. Turner. Yes. Mr. May. Yes. Mayor Grant. Uh, yes, so Ordinance 4.2 is adopted. Okay, Mr. Moore. Ordinance 4.3 by title and ordinance fixing the rate of taxation for the year 2013 on all motor vehicles and levying said tax for all city purposes. Summary. This ordinance fixes the rate of taxation for the year 2013 at the sum of 22 and 7 tenths cents on each $100 valuation on all motor vehicles subject to taxation in the city. This is the first reading. Okay, it's my understanding when we have this, we have to have an uh, open public hearing. That will be the next ordinance. Next ordinance, okay, all right. Continue on. Uh, ordinance 4.4, uh, by title, this is an ordinance fixing the rate of taxation for the year 2012 on all tangible property subject to tax, trust, and insurance companies, public service companies, and levying said tax for all city purposes. By summary, that the 2012 City of Frankfurt ad valorem tax rate is 20 and 9 tenths cents on each $100 valuation of all real and personal property, 20 and 9 tenths cents on each $100 valuation on public utilities and public service companies taxable on a franchise <coughs> basis, 15 and no tenths cents on each $100 valuation on taxable capital of insurance companies. And Mayor, uh, a public hearing does need to be held on this ordinance. Okay, so I will now declare uh, that we uh, will open up for public hearing pertaining to this ordinance. Any citizen can come forth and address this issue. Do we have any any citizen who wants to come and address this issue? Okay. No, ob no objections to a property tax decrease? Mm. That's good to see. So seeing none, then I will now declare uh, the public meeting closed. Continue on, Mr. Uh, ordinance 4.5. This is an ordinance by title and ordinance amending ordinance number 8, 2012 series, appropriating the revenue to be received by the City of Frankfurt for the fiscal year 2012 2013. Summary This ordinance amends the City of Frankfurt sewer budget for fiscal year 2012 uh, 2013 to include a community development block grant received after, after the initial budget was adopted 
these additional grant funds total $600,000. Okay, for that objection, we will accept the first reading of Ordinance 4.5. I've got a, just a, a comment on this real quick. Mayor. All right, sir. Um, it's the, uh, at the work session last, uh, last month, we discussed uh, the possibility of um, rather than doing a series of budget amendments of, of simply waiting to get uh, some numbers back from the Parks Department regarding the swimming pool at East Frankfurt um, and any uh, uh, gosh and, and I and I can't recall again if we if we still need to make an adjustment for uh, spout for spousal benefits or if that's that that, that adjustment needs to be made as well um, my, my, and my understanding is that I'm really glad we got this grant money. Uh, and I, I know it'll be an asset to the sewer department. Um, but uh, my understanding from uh, our sewer director is that this uh, amendment could wait another month. Could. Because uh, the catch with these amendments, obviously, is they can't overlap. Uh, as in we can't uh, we can't make these other adjustments while this one while this one's tying up the agenda for two months. So I'm just wondering if it would be if it would be and we can discuss this more at the work session uh, at our work session this month. But I just as soon we hold another first reading <coughs> next month that incorporates all of these all of these changes in one in one lump so we can just see everything Both deal with it. everything packed together and then and then just pass one one amendment instead of a series spread out. But we, but we, I just wanted to, to mention that we can, uh, we can discuss that more next month. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, okay without objection, that uh, is approved. Mr. Moore. Uh, ordinance 4.6 by title and ordinance to amend the City of Frankfurt's Code of Ordinances, Chapter 150.05, by amending the City of Frankfurt's Property Maintenance Code, Section 302, Exterior Property Areas, Subsections 302.8. Summary. This ordinance amends the city's property maintenance code by amending subsection 302.8, storage of household appliances or non-outdoor furniture, to further clarify that it is intended for such items uh, used, placed, or stored outside. Okay, with that uh, objection, we will accept the first reading of 1.6. Okay. okay. Okay, next we're down to um, orders. Okay, Mr. Gowen. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Item 5.1 is an order establishing a policy for allocating assigned funds. And the purpose of this is to adopt an order to require the board approval before restricting funds for projects meeting operation costs during revenue shortfalls and meeting contractual obligations. All right, uh, I have a motion printing to order 5.1. Mr. May? For approval, we have a second, Commissioner Wilder. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Commissioner Wilder? Yes. Commissioner Hayden? Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes. Commissioner May? Yes. Mayor Graham? Uh, yes, so order 5.1 is adopted. Next, we're down to resolutions, there being none. And then on to the consent calendar, Mr. Goins. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Item 7.1 to award a professional services agreement with I work systems for providing and maintaining a new permit inspection and tracking software program which will replace the current out of service software for the planning and building codes department and authorize the mayor to sign related documents and contracts for such. This is with the building of uh, planning and building codes. Uh, in 1990, the city first purchased a uh, system and uh, in 2002, it became uh, a situation where there was no training was available from the provider when no, new employees were hired or transferred into the department or into the responsibility. Uh, therefore, a new permit tracking system is needed. And our work system includes training, technical support, storing, and updating all files has mobile capabilities that allow staff to update the permit system in the field and has the ability to print in the field approvals or failure reports, letters, and notices. Uh, the Franklin County Planning Department uh, is also transitioning to this same service. 
and the cost of this service would be $3,800. Item 7.2, to authorize a purchase of new staff vehicle for the fire department and to declare the, the replaced vehicle as surplus. Uh, this is for a replacement of the fire chief's vehicle, which is in the budget. Um, this will replace a 2000 Ford Crown Vic, uh, Ford Crown Vic with high mileage, which is in poor condition. The purchase price under state contract would be $22,974.20. Item, item 7.3, to authorize adding funding to the Air Gas Mid-America contract to provide liquid oxygen for the ozone generating system and authorize the mayor to sign all documents re associated with the purchase. It's under the sewer department. Item 7.4, authorization to award a contract to Strafer Pump and Supply Incorporated to purchase a new Aurora Sludge Return Pump. The existing sludge pump is over 30 years old and can no longer pump the uh, required flow. <coughs> Funding is available for this purchase. Item 7.5. Authorization to amend an engineering contract with DLZ Kentucky Incorporated for the Myrtle Avenue Sewer Rehabilitation Project and to authorize the mayor to sign documents related to this project for the sewer department. Uh, this is approving amendment two for the preparation of contract documents for bidding uh, of the Myrtle Avenue Sewer Rehabilitation Project. This would bring the total amount of the contract to $278,233.50. Item 7.6, authorization to amend an engineering contract with HMB Professional Engineering Incorporated for the design of an emergency generator located at the wastewater department, uh, wastewater plant, and to authorize the mayor to sign documents related to this project. This would, uh, bring this to a contract of a total of $88,500. Item 7.7, .7, to approve an agreement between the City of Frankfurt and Westlaw for legal publications and services to provide to the City of Frankfurt. Next item, 7.8, to approve a low, <coughs> the lowest bid for demolition of the structure and rubbish removal at 761 Home Street and to execute the memorandum of agreement. This would be uh, an agreement for $14,900 with John uh, Faisal, Jr. Item 7.9, to authorize the mayor to sign a subordination agreement subordinating the mortgage executed by Kentucky State University in favor of the city of Frankfurt to the Hicks Historic Preservation Conservation and Scenic Easement over the former Paul Sawyer Public Library building. And this is brought by the city solicitor. Uh, 7.10 personnel items. Uh, appointment of Heather Morrison, the police department, patrol officer one. Appointment of Thomas Tillett, public works, public works tech one. Resignation, Tim Taylor and police department 911. Resignation of James Morrill, Public Works Tech 2, authorized payment for accrued leave. <clears throat> Resignation, Betty Burris from Public Works, Transit Department, an authorized payment of 50% of accrued leave. Resignation, Marvin Gibson, Public Works, Public Works 3, uh, no, accrued, no accrued leave balance. A retirement, Jeff Anglin that we heard earlier, the firefighter EMT3, and our authorized payment for accrued leave. Also, permission to make one conditional offer of employment for the position of firefighter EMT. This request to make this conditional offer of employment is contingent upon successful completion of background, medical, uh, physiological, polygraph, and drug screen examinations by candidate. This concludes the consent.
see. Do I have any a motion pertaining to the approval of the consent calendar? Commissioner May, second from Commissioner Hedden. Any comments? Please call the roll. Commissioner Wilder? Yes. Commissioner Hedden? Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes. Commissioner May? Yes. May Brown? Yes, so the consent calendar is approved. Next on the agenda are board appointments. There being one uh, on the planning commission. I'd like to recommend uh, for the appointment of Sharon, the reappointment of Sharon Jackson uh, to a term on the Planning Commission to ending July 1, 2016. Uh, we have a resume has been provided and uh, a letter. Do I have a move for approval? Move approval. Second from Commissioner Wilder. Uh, in discussion, could you please call the roll? Commissioner Wilder? Yes. Commissioner Hedden? Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes. Commissioner May? Yes. Uh, yes, so Sharon Jackson has been reappointed to the Planning Commission with the term ending July 1, 2016. Next item, old business. Do we have any old business? Commissioner Wilder. Um, I just wanna, wanna report that the, uh, that the county, that the fiscal court has accepted our challenge to a canoe race on uh, September 8th at five o'clock p.m. at Riverview Park. And this will be at um, at Paddle Fest, which is an annual benefit for the King Center. Um, I think this will probably be the sporting event of the year, if not the decade, and I'm really looking forward to it. Okay. That's counting the Olympics, by the way. Yeah, yeah. And there's just four, not six, to a... Four-person team. Oh, four, four, four people so to a canoe. Can't, we can't do ringers. All right. Uh, ringers are allowed, but I... Oh, uh, well, we don't need them. We don't think we need them. We're good. Yeah. All right. The ringers. I know. I know I am. <laughs> All right, you need the old business. Okay, dope. Now, new business. Uh, Commissioner Wilder. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I was asked to uh, to announce that the uh, sixth annual Fallen Firefighters 5K Walk Run um, is going to be taking place on September 15th. Um, folks can register the day of the race. This is, this is to benefit, this is of local interest because it benefits the Kentucky Fallen Firefighters Memorial, which is a really excellent mem uh, memorial that uh, the city hosts at uh, Juniper Hills Park. Um, but it, like I said, that race is on, the, uh, it's on September 15th. Uh, folks can contact Casey Crawford at 859-256-3326 um, or visit the Fire Commission website at www.kyfirecommission.kctcs.edu. Dot kc -tc thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. I may, Mayor, Mayor is, would it be possible to uh, post that information on the city's website for those who are interested who may want uh, the number and contact info? That'd be Thanks. great. Yeah. That's a good idea. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Is it, All right. In the other news, <coughs> I guess I just wanted to share one more piece of news. All right, sir. Uh, folks might have, might have actually already, already seen this in the news, but the uh, uh, latest round of um, unemployment statistics came out and Frankfort and Franklin County uh, are down to a 7.1 percent unemployment rate and I and I know we would all like to see it lower but that's still uh, that's one of the better rates in the in the nation right now uh, it's lower than the state and national averages um, and that's that's really says something when you consider the fact that state government has been uh, they've been cutting back a bit and so our, our private sector has been picking up the slack and then some and so I know we're all very proud of uh, our local economic development efforts and our uh, quasi-governmental agencies that assist with that, like uh, um, CECITA and, and DFI and, and tourism. So everybody pat yourselves on the back yeah. and then get back to work. Yeah, more and more and more. Uh, right. All right, any other new business? Seeing none, then we are down to the last item on the agenda. It's adjournment. Do I have a motion for adjournment? Mayor, I move for adjournment. You have a second? Mr. I was going to say, and when we do, I'd like to say that we adjourn in honor of, of Mr. Fred Giltz. A motion, okay, make a motion to adjourn in honor of, of our president, city manager, Fred Goins. Uh, we got a second for that, okay? Second. All right, uh, call roll. Commissioner Wilder? Yes. Commissioner Hedden? Thank you, Fred. Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes, thank you, Fred. Mr. Mayor? Yes, thanks, Fred. May Ram.
Good night, Mrs. Calabash, wherever you are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, yeah, <laughs>